power in the name of Jesus. We believe in his name. Yes? We are called by the name of Jesus. See, when we fill our forms, when they ask you, what is your religion? What do you write? You all don't write anything? Christian. Huh? Christian. You write Christian. Why Christian? Because we are called by the name of Jesus. So if you go anywhere, just, Christian is not religion. It's not just a religion, but it is what we are called by. All of us have a name and all our names, all our surnames are Christian. I am Deborah Christian. She is Jemmy Christian. Each one is a, okay, that's our surname, our father's name. You know, um, my niece was uh, recently, um, she, well, she, she was uh, talking about, while well, she was leading, but she was uh, saying how she works for an army officer in a government, uh, I mean, for the military. And um, she has an identity card. And every time she enters, she has to show her identity card. She has been working there for many, many years, okay? And even if they have seen her face hundred times, still when she enters, she has to show her identity. What is my identity? Okay, my identity today is who's, what, you know, what's my name? What is my name today? Okay, I stand in whose name? I stand in the name of? Jesus okay and it's because we are called by the name of Jesus we can come here and uh, you know ask of the Lord speak to the Lord enter the holy of holies as a child of the Lord because our identity is in Christ it's in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 11 it says for this reason I kneel before the father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name so when we go by in the name of Jesus, we are actually going in the character of God, who He is. Okay, there is power in uh, just by just speaking His name out, just by going and our uh, identity. The, we carry an authority with us because we are the children of God. Okay, and it is this God who has given us. He says, "I've given you the authority to call me Abba Father." Yes. Yes, can we call, just, just thank at this time and just say, Lord, I just want to thank you that I carry your name, that I have the privilege of, you know, walking around with this surname. Yes? yes Lord. So we'll sing this song once again and believe that we uh, have this authority in the name of Jesus, that if we ask of anything, we will, he will give us. If we stand, demons will flee. Yes? And there is no nothing impossible there's nothing impossible in in the name of jesus come let us sing with believing that there is power in the name of jesus
given us, Lord, to be called sons and daughters, Lord God. Thank you for this privilege that you give us, Lord, that we can enter, Lord God, enter into your holy of holies, Lord, just as your child carrying your name, Lord. Lord, that we can, Lord, call on your name, Lord, anytime, anytime, day, night, in trouble, in joy, Lord, we can call on your name. What a privilege you've given us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for the authority you give us, Lord, in your name, Lord God, to cast out demons, Lord, to be healed, Lord God. Lord, like you did, Lord God. Yes, Lord, your children did, Lord, in the past, and they're still doing. Who oh, Lord, praying in your name and seeing, Lord God, water turn to wine, seeing miracles happen, Lord God. Abba, Father, what a privilege. What a privilege it is to come, Lord, before you today, Lord God. Lord, we will not be ashamed, Lord God, to be called Christians, Lord God, because we carry your name, Lord God. We will not be ashamed, Lord God, to be, Lord, called your children, Lord God, in this time, in this generation, Lord, in the midst of all that's happening around us, Lord God. Lord, we will be proud, Lord God. We will proudly carry your name, Lord God. Lord, make us worthy children, Lord God, of your name, Lord God.
want to thank you lord for being our god oh lord lord jesus you are lord by your name oh lord we lord we are here oh lord jesus lord we thank you for lord what you have done oh father lord lord jesus we want to thank you for the salvation lord we want to thank you for your son Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, that you gave us victory, O oh Lord, in all that we, Lord, we're struggling, O oh Father, Lord. Jesus, it's you, and Lord, it's your power, Lord, it's your name, it's you, Lord, it's your glory, O oh Lord Jesus, Lord, that we have come to experience this morning, O oh Father, Lord. Lord Jesus, it's your presence, O oh Lord, Master. It's your anointing, and Lord, it's above, above everything, O oh Lord. It's your unconditional love, Lord, which, Lord, which, Lord, covers us every day, O oh Father, Lord. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord. Jesus. Jesus, that you are with us and you are leading us and Lord you are protecting us Lord you are filling us with your love oh Master Lord Lord we want to thank you for that Holy Spirit oh Master Lord oh, yes. Lord that didn't let us go Lord astray oh Master Lord Lord you never let us Lord try oh Father Lord but you always fill us with your love fill us with your power fill us with your spirit oh Lord Lord you are enabling us Lord to worship you and to exalt your name oh Master Lord we want to thank you and praise you Oh Lord, I want to thank you, Lord. I thank you. Yes,
thank you this morning, Lord God. Be enthroned on our praises, Lord God. And your, may your kingdom, Lord, be established, Lord God, on earth as it is in heaven, Lord God. We bless you, Lord, this morning. In Jesus' name. We'll sing this uh, Tamil song. And as we sing this, we can bring our tithes and offerings. There's no one like our God. Yes? And as we sing this, we'll sing it with full belief, believing that, yes, Lord, there is no one like our God. Thank you. The Lord, there is no one is compared to you. There is no other God like you. Lord, we have the privilege to worship this living God. Thank you for opening our eyes. Thank you, Lord, setting us free. Thank you, Lord, revealing that you are our Savior. You are our God. And you are the living God. You are our maker. And Lord, you deserve worship. So Lord, this morning... Thank you for this revelation. Lord, also we remember at this stage, there are so many do not know who is the right God. Who is God? Lord, we pray that may you open the eyes that they may see the true and the living God. They will know there is a God who loves them. Loves them. There is a God who is living God. There is a God who wants to relate to us. There is a God who wants to who who who, who wants to communicate with us. Lord, we pray. Lord, many will know there is a living God through our life. Lord, we worship you. 
Lord, we want to worship you this morning. Thank you for receiving our worship. Lord, help us, O oh Lord. We'll continue to live. Lord, we'll continue to live for you. Lord, we'll live as who we are. Lord, may people see us, how we relate to this living God. And that others will know there is a God that they can. There is a God who's approachable. So Lord God, may this way be made known through your people. So Lord, we submit our lives to you. We also bring our tithe and offering and lay it before you, Lord. Thank you so much for all your blessings. Thank you for sustaining us all through these, Lord, difficult times. So Lord, receive our worship. Receive our offering. Receive our tithe. Receive our generous giving. And Lord, bless these. That Lord, we'll be able to meet, Lord, use these resources wisely. Also, we pray for those who are in need. Provide for them. Jehovah Jireh, provide for them. Sustain your people. Thank you, Lord. Into your hands commit. Be with us. Continue to speak to us as we continue to remain in your presence. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, friends. Please be seated. Thanks for the choir. It's all our children no? leading us in the worship. God has blessed our children with all the gifts. They are very busy people, but still they find some time for us and time for God. Okay, give them a good hand. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Right. Um, yeah, today's, uh, yesterday we had a good time. Um, we didn't make big publicity. Mm. Paul, there are some photographs of that? Yeah. Okay. Um, because of various reasons, we didn't make publicity. All the youth were supposed to go for um, a trek yesterday. Till the middle of the week, we couldn't you know, decide. Even on Friday evening, we couldn't decide whether we'll have it or not due to the weather condition. But we did have yesterday a good time. We had a time of trekking and we had some games. And, and uh, we'll show some pictures. Then after that, I will also talk about the baptism that we had. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it coming? Ah, we can switch out the lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finished, huh? Just push. I was supposed to tell you something. People don't know what it is. Okay, yeah. So all the youth, we had a, a gathering in, in Matthew and Sharon's place, Alada. It was a lovely place. Thanks. We really thank them for preparing the place for us. I was a bit worried. Uh, in case if it rains, it is all 25, 30 of the children will go and ransack, the, ransack that place. But actually, Sharon said, don't, don't worry, you all come. So we had a good time. Uh, also, they, uh, we had to baptize three people. One came from Bangalore, one came from uh, Walpare, and uh, uh, Zacharias is here. And, and they, we had to find some running water. Okay? And Matthew found that place. They really cleared those bush, and, and we had to really trek down. And it was as if it was created for us. Beautiful waterfalls, and just enough water for us to stand there. And to reach that place, a little difficult, okay? And all couldn't come. And we tried to sing song because of this waterfall sound. We couldn't uh, hear anyone singing. Even I couldn't speak also much. So it's, it was a good time. So I will uh, ask them to come and appear before you, okay? And uh, so we had a good time. And we also had some games there. And we had some time of, they also gave their testimony. And um, uh, we also had some good, some encouraging talk for our children. Okay, I trust that this will go on. And uh, this is the first outing we had with, in, during this lockdown. And uh, praise God. And even in this time, people are receiving God. They are waiting to get baptized. And in fact, Gautam has been trying e-pass for the last few weeks. The moment he got the pass, then we had to make the arrangement. So it was all done like this. So um, Isaac came all the way from Valpare just to get baptized because his parents are there. So, and just this week, last week only he had gone and he had to come back. Good. This all shows that the new relationship that you have begun in Christ. Okay. Right. Thank you. Um, right then.
Okay. So Nick, uh, I will call them. We'll interview them. What they did yesterday. Okay. Um, um, next, uh, on second, uh, second Sunday uh, of December, we will have children's, um, children's Christmas program, as usual we will have. But children below 10 years cannot come, but others will be here. And uh, so we will try to do some digital, you know, pre-recorded something for children below 10 years also. So we will have um, a Christmas program that day. We'll also have somebody else coming from outside to speak to them. And others can watch from home, okay? And um, um, so parents, please cooperate and send your children on time for whatever practices we are going to plan. So Lizzie and Mamta will be coordinating that uh, part. Mm -hmm. um, missionary gifts, still we need money. Mm -hmm. We have not reached our target. So please think about it. Talk to your friends, talk to your relatives. Let the house of the Lord be filled with enough resources so we can you know, bless the missionaries during this Christmas time. Okay. Um, nice to have uh, Danny and Rachel. So last week, Paul and myself and Lizzie, we all went and visited them. Mm. They are doing a good job there, an isolated place, far from the town. At the same time, close to, from the town. They are in uh, Karamede, a kind uh, that place. So there are some, it's a new layout, around 80 families are living there, I think. Mm. And some more families, when I went out other side, some more apartments are coming. So in two years, there'll be major, it's a big locality. Okay. And she's, the lady's having some prayer cell in their house and some children's work in some place, and some social work in some place. Whatever they could do, they are doing it. So pray for them that God will, uh, they won't be able to have fellowship with this like others you can have because of their geographical location. But God has taken them, so God should lead them. So whatever they do, they will not be just being active, but very specifically what God wants to uh, do in that place. And uh, good job you are doing. Continue to good work, and God will guide you. As you step out, why should God show you the second step when you are on the first step? So in the beginning, you may put your hand in anything that is opens up. That's fine, God, but God will show you further. Okay, God bless you. And uh, in a few years' time, there will be more people in that place. Okay, and already she's running a cell group also with the uh, uh, um, audio cell with their, with their school teachers. That's a very good thing. Okay, good. Okay, um, so can I call? Gautam, let people see you. I know you don't like it. Huh? Okay, you can remove your mask for a minute and you can, you can say hi to us and, and what you did yesterday and how you're feeling. Mic is given. Let's switch to the mic. Yeah. Alex, huh? No, no. Take the mic with it. They have switched off from there, over. Is this on? No, no, no. Okay, you speak from there. <laughs> Too much of my spit is in this. I don't want to give you this mic. Yeah, yeah, speak, speak, speak. Now check the mic. Yeah. So that that time itself, I I mean I asked them if it is possible, but they told it is not possible right now. Then I had to go to Bangalore. I was there, and I was trying to come in between for this thing, for baptism. And uh, finally, I could. I mean, yesterday I came, I got baptized. It's uh, and the feeling wise, I mean, 
Sir, now we're going to start, right? So, we'll see. So you're making, uh, you're contemplating about making this decision. Huh? Uh, he's the most silent uh, student of foundation course. Hmm? Very intelligent question he'll ask or input in between he'll give. He's a thinker. So his decision is not just emotional. Hmm? And even after leaving Kunur, then that decision to get baptized and honor Jesus is hmm, worked in his life. So um, yesterday you said something. You know, there are many ways. Hmm? Can you make that statement again? <laughs> like, uh, I mean, I have been trying to, like, you know, there's always really one path for the end of it, and I'm very curious how the things will end. As an entirety, like how the universe will end and things like that. So there's usually one path, and that one path is decided by God, or uh, seen by God, and I wanted to always see how the things will end. And, well, this is the right path for me to follow so that I'll also be in the end to see and to learn. So Jesus said the same thing. I'm the only way. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. Outside me, there is no hope. So your eternal life is only through me and in me. Hmm? So now it is God who has convinced him. So his baptism is an outward expression of what is believed in his heart that we could do yesterday. Thank you. God bless you. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, next. Next. Yeah, Isaac, come. Good morning, church. And uh, yesterday I was just baptized. And uh, I just come from a traditional Christian family. And uh, it's like uh, more than 21 years, I know about God. I know the love of God. And God has done everything more than I needed. But still, I just took God for granted. It's like something goes correct in my life. I just thought it was God's wish. And when something does not go right, oh, it's not God's wish. Uh, that was my belief and that was when I was just following. But when God just brought me here after I just took so many counseling with Dave Dunkel and Paula, and after all these foundation courses, and I just found out, uh, I have not even asked God what is his will. So already I was like uh, choosing on myself. And the moment I just found that I must ask God and God has done everything for me. And this is the time to do something for God. And the first time I just thought it is to be get baptized and allow God to work in my life. And that's the moment I just uh, took a decision to, to, to be baptized. And I just uh, asked Paula and uh, uh, asked uncle and then God just showed me a way and that too in this COVID time. And I, I also want to share two of my testimonies in my life where God has led me till now. So I can't say that I'm a good boy. Just because of God, I'm a good boy. Yes. It's like uh, the first uh, testimony is that when I was in seventh standard, I have some bad company. So the next year, 8th standard, I was just got transferred to Valparai. So it is just 250 kilometers from Kothagiri. So after the years went on, uh, one day in my 10th, I just was, when I was reading the Bible, I just found a verse that, how far is in East and First, and that far will keep you away from sin. And that was the first miracle, and God kept me away from sin. And the second miracle is that, during my college days, uh, we just went on a vacation in a, with our family and we were all playing in the river. So suddenly when we all just finished and it was a time to return back to home. And that time a cousin of mine just said, there's a coconut ahead of you. Who's going to catch it first? Uh, they'll be the winner. So when we just all ran into it, we all just went 20 feet. Uh, we all drowned and we all were saved by God's wish. And while I was drowning, my eyes were open and uh, I could see a green water before me. First, I was holding on to my uncle and he just, he also don't know swimming. He left me and went. And there were no one around me, but still, uh, I could see a cross before me that is uh, nothing but I was wearing a rosary. So it, since it's a plastic, it was just uh, floating before me. I'm not saying that rosary saved me and I just saw a cross before me. I got a hope. So God is not going to leave me down. And from the 20 feet, I don't know how I just came to the show, but no one did not help me. So I came to the show and God saved me. And then in my third year, I just, uh, from my school days, 
I have a heart problem, but which I just took it just like that. So if I keep a pen in my pocket, you can see the pen moving. So once when I just saw an interview on a TV, the doctor said it's a problem that you have in a right ventricle. So I just informed my parents and when I went to a hospital, morning the junior doctor checked me and she said, why are you so late? Uh, are you drinking or are you smoking? Uh, it is a must, uh, you would be drinking or smoking, you are so late. And then after doing all the checkup, so my mom was also was, was praying and she had a vision like, uh, my, my heart turned blue and uh, it was a new heart. But when uh, evening when I just came, the senior doctor came and checked me and he just said, you are a normal person, your heart is normal. That is, uh, there is no problem in you. And that was a miracle and God gave me a new life. And even just uh, after finishing my uh, studies, I just came here. And uh, my cousin Francis, who, he used to come to Union Church. He, he gave me intro to Paulna and David Uncle. And uh, I, I think it's one year I had so many struggles, like uh, my parents were also were not allowing. But still God was just uh, with me and he guided me. And uh, all those foundation courses and uh, uh, uncle gave me good counseling and Paulna also. So I had so many misunderstanding in the verses and I was just going in a wrong path having all those misunderstanding and at last uh, God helped me and uh, when I just came and uh, asked uncle and Paulna and they just cleared all my doubts and I was uh, in a right path and uh, it's like um, I was in a relationship with a girl who is from an another religion and there's no problem other than this religion I just thought not to give on it and when I just came and uh, it took more than me uh, six months when I came first and her uncle said, uh, no, uh, you can't marry and then uh, after the foundation courses, I just came to uncle and asked about the verse which is in the Bible. So, and uncle uh, just made me clear that if I'm going to marry the girl who belonged to other religion, so it's like worshipping their God. So, and that's the moment uh, I took a decision in my life that I must not marry her and uh, I'm clear and uh, I submitted myself to God and I, I wanted God to work in me and I also asking God, God you have uh, planted me but if I go out from here how would I grow in you God? So it will be a waste of uh, since even I am getting baptized I just want to grow in you and God also opened a way for me and uh, through my friend I was just informed that uh, the army school in Wellington has uh, so there is an exam for it. So if I uh, go through it, so I can pray and go more in God. So I have my exam this week. So I just want all of you to pray for me. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, I never, I, I give you a good hand. Go ahead. <laughs> Thanks, Isaac, for being so open. Uh, um, uh, now that he has spoken something, I should endorse what he said. I never told him, don't marry anybody from other religion. Okay. We don't give outright answer. So I asked questioned him. Read the word, what Bible, Bible is saying. Soon he discovered that it is not right. So one question he asked is, who is your father? Heavenly father is my father. So the girl who doesn't accept Christ, she belongs to whom? You belong to kingdom of light. So you are a child of the kingdom of light. So heavenly father is your father. So the girl that you marry, who is her father? Those who don't accept Jesus, who is the opposite of light? Come on, church. Darkness. So who is the king of darkness? God of the darkness. You are not confused? Come on, you are feeling... Come on, who is that person? Satan, devil. Now, if you get married to a girl whose father is Satan, then who will be your father-in-law? So you can you are free to marry. <laughs> Have the devil as your father-in-law. Listen, uh, children, those who are here and those who are, you know marriageable age, listen. Don't make a choice. You can't have two measuring rods in your family. You cannot have two governments in your home. However, it's good. How may they look good? 
but remember they are under whose authority under whose kingdom so when you marry somebody who's some other kingdom that will never be at peace okay so you'll have two rules two standards two values two principles and life will go on i can tell stories of people who ruin their life okay so don't think oh our love is above the religion our love is above oh no 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 after marriage everything comes up okay so don't deny jesus that you love don't betray jesus who died for you on the cross follow him he knows what is best for you he will provide the right partner for your life so stay focused wait on god and go for a person that acknowledge jesus in her life so in your family there will be one king there will be one government okay there will be peace when something goes wrong you know where to refer to so you can refer to one mac makers manual so there won't be any confusion in your life so god bless you thank you isaac for being so open god bless you is a public you know declaration so there is a favor of god will be upon us okay god will help you to walk clean and walk clear okay come zekaria zekaria's parents are here our uh, parents we missed you all <laughs> yesterday but then uh, i wanted to baptize him in your presence but then it didn't work out he was also ready no uncle he want he's he's ready from last two months okay right so i should i thought we should not stop him uh praise the lord uh, i first of all want to thank uh my father lord jesus christ is everything to me i want to thank him first and uh, i especially want to thank david uncle uh, sajo uncle paul anna and titus uncle because yesterday i got baptized with their with the elders blessings and it was so you know it was so it was so happy to to be to getting to get blessings from all the church elders and uh, i just want to sh- share my short testimony i i want to put it short so i was in the sinful way uh, like you all know what is a sinful way i was addicted to some they all are very innocent they don't know <laughs> <laughs> i was like addicted to something and uh, i don't want to mention it uh, <laughs> so i was addicted to it and like life went on i didn't have any breakthroughs and i was i was like i was a dumb and uh, like i heard like more than 1000 times i have heard that jesus christ died on the cross for our sins but it actually didn't mean anything to me it was uh, it was like a usual story but this time th- during this lockdown time i received uh, salvation uh, i have a friend of mine in uh, kotigiri so he was the one who shared about jesus christ so like twice he shared me he shared the testimony he shared his testimony his experiences and and all that all those things and uh, the third day he called me i was actually not interested i blocked this number and uh, the other day he saw me and he met me and he asked me uh, why aren't you answering my calls i was like uh, no i was busy with something else so he just and he told me one thing uh, why don't you come this one time like uh, i don't want to force you let me just uh, tell you this one last time i wanted to talk to you something and uh, every time i listen about jesus christ it was you know it was boring actually like jesus christ died on the cross and it is like it didn't mean anything to me and this time it it seemed unusual to me something was something was touching me like uh, i felt so bad that why am i even like this why what am i doing to my life and uh, uh, what is actually going on and uh, and he said you don't have to confess all your sins to me Uh, just do one thing go there's a chapel in my school go there uh, kneel down and uh, you know like speak to jesus like in person you talk to him talk to him as a father he said don't be shy tell him everything that you've been doing and i told him and i literally f- i felt that you know presence of god coming on me and delivering me from everything and uh, that is the day that changed my life so it's been like uh four months i guess yeah it's been like four months something by god's grace you know god has brought me over here and he's given me such a beautiful family i'm so much blessed to to you know to have you all and god has given me some youth friends also so i pray that 
I all I um, I'm every day praying for you all youngsters, and I want to just tell this one thing: uh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. That's very encouraging. Let's give a hand. Okay. Uh, there are two great significant days in our life. Hmm? Number one is your birthday, the day you are born. Otherwise, there is no, uh, there is no, uh, there is a reference point for you, right? So the greatest day is the day you are born. But the greatest day of all is the day you discover why you are born. Though there should be two days in your life. One day, you are born, not because of you did something. God chose that you will be born. The second is the day you discover why you are born. That makes a difference. Okay? So, once you discover that, your life will change. So, three of you have got baptized. There is going to be a new journey, new life. The fact that you gave up some choices, you made some adjustment in your choices, they are of eternal consequence. God bless you. So continue to honor Jesus the same way how you have begun before baptism and even post-baptism, continue that. So you cannot miss out the purpose for which God created you. Okay? Right. God bless you. Okay, let's give a good hand to the Lord. God is good. Uh, even in this closed down time, God is working in the hearts of people and there are also young people coming to the Lord and making a choice to get baptized. Some more are waiting. So we'll have one more before in, in the short time, right? Okay. Paul is yours. So good morning, church. I want to thank the Lord for this opportunity. You know, it's, he's been so gracious to all of us. And uh, he is leading us, right? Yeah? So as Uncle said, we had a wonderful day yesterday. It was so awesome. Amazing to see these, uh, you know, men rising up for Christ, giving their life for Christ. Okay, so we are doing, as we all know, this series continues, series from the book of Ephesians. So last week, we saw about the mystery in Christ, right? So, you know, um, last time when I preached, I, I preached about Paul's prayer for, uh, you know, for the believers to receive the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. And, you know, today I'm going to pre preach on enlightenment in Christ. Okay, enlightenment in Christ. So the previous... Uh, um, you know, preaching, I preach from Ephesians chapter 1, 15 to 23, which talks about the resurrection power of Christ. So I thought, you know, that, uh, you know, Paul, when he started his uh, preaching or his letter to this church, he spoke about all the riches in Christ and all the benefits that they have received from the eternal father. And, and after that, he you know, went on to pray for the church. So he prayed that he, you receive the power. You receive the power. And further, he continues in teaching them, in teaching them and sharing the doctrines with them. And now, again, in chapter 3, verses 14 to 22, he prays for the church. You know, it was like this, that when we need fire, okay, when we don't have any source of a lighting fire, what we do? We do some sort of, you know, um, it's like uh, how uh, we, in, in past, they used to light fire. They used to rub with uh, wood or uh, get the spark from the stone and they light the fire. It was the same method Paul was actually following. The first thing, he got the spark. He got the spark in chapter 1. And again, he takes them further. You know what he does? He blows he blows, he blows. What happens when you blow? When you, you put, what happens? The fire? 
Yeah, it's more. So this is the same thing that he does. He blows, he blows, he blows. And now he wants them to fire up. He wants them to be fired up. So, you know, this chapter is again Paul's prayer for the uh, church of Ephesians. So uh, I, I wanted to read the verse. For this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit, spirit in your inner being. <clears throat> so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the for the wonderful worship. As the worship started, she said, you know, our identity is from Father. Our identity is from God. The same thing that Paul is mentioning in this is that our identity is from Father in heaven. When he says, you know, family, when he mentions family, this was a new term for that church. This was a new term for that church because as uncle preached, you know, there was one group of people and there was another group of people. This group was Jewish who knows God, who, who was uh, chosen by God, who was called by God, who was separated by God for the purposes that God had for Jewish people. And here is another group of people. Who are they? Are Gentiles, right? So they are coming into this family by this name, Jesus. So they are united. So this family gives a term as oneness, one orgasm, or in united in Christ. So Paul says, since you are united in Christ, you were in. In, you know, you were different altogether. Your cultures were different. Your traditions were different. Your beliefs were different. You know, your practices were different. But through Jesus, you came together. Now they have become a family. Now they have become, you know, one in Christ. And this represents church. Amen. So church accommodates all, all irrespective of our differences. Respective of who we are, respective of what we do, respective of what level we are. But church is a beautiful family that God has constituted by the power of Jesus Christ. And through the name of Jesus Christ that he brought us together. And it, through church, you know, church is our identity. Church is our security. Church is our purpose that God has given us. Amen. And it, church is the blessing for the world. And through church, the world will receive deliverance of Jesus Christ. Through church, the world will receive salvation. So in this verse, we can see everything revolves around church, within church. And, you know, we are here. It's not by accident. It's by, you know, God's will. Amen? We are sitting here is because God has a will for us. And, you know, further he says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Before getting into, you know, my actual three points, I would like to uh, explain the first part of 16, verse 16. I pray that out of his glorious riches, you know, in, uh, in, in um, the NIV it says, according to his glorious riches. So it is like this. That if someone is coming to me and asking for some charity, okay, and I am a wealthy man, and their charity amount is, you know, for example, it's one lakh, and I'm giving 10,000 for them. So it is like I'm giving out of my riches. But when we say according to my riches, according to his riches, you know, I'm a wealthy man, so they come and then I take my checkbook. And I ask them, how much do you want? So this is a full amount. It's fully, that is, cleared. So here he says, out of his glorious riches, according to his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. So what Paul is praying for this church, the first thing is, strengthened by the spirit 
in your inner being. <clears throat> so he says, with power may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. So, you know, when he says inner being, it means uh, man is uh, made up of body, soul, and spirit, right? And all our emotions and uh, feelings and everything happens within us. But what we are outside is different. Even sometimes we might be sad inside, but outside we'll be glad. Sometimes inside we'll be, you know, angry, but outside we won't show up. But, you know, Paul says to this church that you have to guard your inside. Strengthen your inner man. You, you have to be empowered within you. You know, when we build a building, um, are we cleaning the building, you know, outside of the building every day or are we cleaning the inside of the building every day? So inside is more important for us, right? Inside is more important. Outside is just, you know, we'll just maintain. But inside is more important. Similarly, inner man is more important that we have to ensure that we are strengthened by the power through his spirit within. You know, um, the first bike that I bought was Max R100, Suzuki Max R100. How many of you would have seen? The difference between the bikes that we have right now and the old bikes are, those were uh, two-stroke. Now we have four-stroke. Two-stroke means we have to add oil and go. Four-stroke need not to add oil. So once I had to go to a village for my work and I went, you know, filled fuel, uh, petrol and went. And suddenly, you know, it was a steep, uh, you know, road I had to climb and suddenly my bike st uh, stopped. And I was stranded. And I was trying my level best to start the bike, but nothing happened. And it gave, it gave you know, it's a uh, funny noise. And then I realized what would have been wrong? What would have gone wrong? And immediately there came a thought inside me. What about the oil? What about the oil? I fill petrol, but what about the oil? You know, we have to ensure that our inner man is strengthened by the Holy Spirit. That's what Paul says. You be filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. You've been renewed by the power of the Holy Spirit every day so that our journey will not be standard. If I would have ensured that that man filled the oil with the petrol, I wouldn't have been stranded that time. You know, I wouldn't have been struck that time. My, I wouldn't have faced any challenges. But, you know, I didn't ensure that, you know, the proper oil was, you know, given to the bike. You know, even to our life, we should ensure that, you know, we are strengthened in our man. We are strengthened within that, you know, our, our, the Holy Spirit would work in our life. And Paul says, you know, your inner being must be strengthened by the Holy Spirit. And further he says, the second thing, Christ dwelling in our hearts through faith. You know, he builds one by one. The first thing he says, let your inner man be strengthened. And now he says, Christ dwelling in our hearts through faith. So when your inner man is strengthened, then it, you know, Christ will dwell in our hearts. What dwelling he is talking about? So the, when the church accepted Christ, then Christ would have, you know, they would have received Christ. They would have, you know, um, given way for Christ to dwell in his heart, in their hearts. But Paul here, he is talking about a continual presence of God working in their life. It's not a temporary encounter that we have, but it is a continual presence that is working in our hearts. You know, dwelling of Christ brings a lot of difference. If Christ is not dwelling, someone else will dwell. That's the enemy. You know, we have a bird shelter here near ATC. You know, uncle loves birds and then uh, once he bought uh, love birds and few birds from, you know, um, from Nagarkoil side. Dove kind of birds. And one day, you know, morning when all came here, all the birds vanished. Especially that dove, 
is not at all there. All were confused. And we were trying to retrieve, you know, the video recordings, cameras, and nothing worked out. We were thinking how this happened, how this happened, what could have happened. The cage was enclosed. No one can go inside. No one can, you know, take them and go. It was locked. And how it was. And then finally, it struck David Uncle that, is there any rat hole here that we didn't notice? The enemy, you know, can tap us through one small hole. We have to ensure who is dwelling in our hearts. Who is dwelling within us? Is it Christ or the enemy? What the Bible says, if the enemy comes, he will steal, he will destroy, he will kill. But if Christ is there, he brings transformation and he brings changes in our heart. What happens when Christ dwells in our heart? Let me explain you. When we got married, you know, uh, Lizzie and I, we went to KT and all, we never arranged any of our things, okay? And we took a lot of time and Lizzie was adamant that she wants things right there. And she wanted things to be like this. And I was mad. I didn't know what to do. And this brought a lot of, you know, like uh, early marriage friction. What are you, Lizzie? Why are you trying to, you know, make me mad? And then finally we found a savior, Titus uncle. So he said, I asked Titus uncle, this, this is troubling me. I don't know what to do. There's so much of, uh, you know, um, problems that are coming against, you know, within us. And Titus uncle said, what is the problem? And she shared, Uncle Paul is not at all understanding that I have, I want my house to be like this. I want things to keep here. I want my bedroom to be like this. And then Titus uncle explained me, you see for ladies, for them, infrastructure is more important. Then only I was enlightened. Oh, there is something to learn. Something more to learn. So they would alter the place according to their, their wish. According to their desire. Because she is going to dwell in the house. When Christ has desired, when Christ comes within us, in our heart, then what Christ does, he would alter the place according to his desire. Amen? You understand? Christ will alter our anger. Christ will alter, you know, our challenges. Christ will alter our addictions. Christ will alter us and he will transform us in a way that he wants us to be. He wants the place to be. Wherever Christ dwell, there was transformation. There was healing. There was deliverance. There was change. There was revival. And he was a revolutionist. He broke tradition. He gave importance to people. So if Christ is within us, there is transformation. Amen. That's what Paul says. Who is dwelling? Strengthen your inner being. Prepare your house. Prepare your hearts for Christ to dwell in you. When Christ dwells in you, he brings alteration. He will alter the house, you know, according to his desire. If you don't strengthen your inner being, then someone else will, you know, someone else will uh, dwell in, in, in your life and he will bring chaos. He will steal your joy. He will kill you and take away the peace. And the third point that Paul was praying Further, he develops from Christ dwelling to so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love. So all these things is for this climax, is for us to understand the love of Christ. You know, when we decide to buy a car, what would be the first thing that we do? Is we gather information about the car, right? As we get the car's um, uh, brochure, or we uh, surf in the internet and we get gather all sort of information about the car. What are the specifications, features that the car has? And we are done with all the informations. And if, if, you know, if we want to buy the car, the next step what we do, we and uh, they uh, were into it, they were into magical powers, they believed it, they thought that their uh, wealth would grow and they would grow because of this magical powers. So this dimensions was one of the things for them to experience the power of the, you know, God, gods or goddesses they were worshipping. They wanted to know the magnitude of their power. 
So Paul takes the same language and he says, hey, don't try to know a false magnitude which is not going to happen. But here is the love of God. You go behind it, you search and you try to experience this which should bring the true reality. You know, whatever you are experiencing, whatever you are expecting, all your expectations will be, you know, will, will come to true when you search this love. Now, God is so specific, so as Paul, he says, experience, be rooted and be established in the love of God. Your firmness, you have to be rooted. Your roots should expand, it should go inside and be established. You should have a good foundation. Be firm in knowing the love of God. Be firm in knowing the love of God. He's very specific. You know, in Genesis chapter 22, we uh, read an incident from the life of Abraham. God is asking Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. And here is Abraham, without any hesitation, he takes um, Isaac to the mountain to sacrifice. So God, you know, puts a Abraham to test. After waiting so many years... God gave him a child. Now God wants the child back to him as a sacrifice. Now Abraham didn't hesitate. No, he took the child the, and he arranged the altar and he made Isaac to lie and tied his hands. Now is the time that he is going to you know, sacrifice Isaac. God said, Abraham, stop it. Don't do it. God said, stop it. So all these things God expected is to know, you know the depth of the love that we have experienced in him. The depth of the love that Abraham had experienced in God. How much he loved God so that he didn't, you know, he, 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 he was ready to spare. He was ready to give away everything that he had. He waited so many years for Isaac, but he never hesitated to give away Isaac for the love that he had on God. Even in our life, now God is not expecting anything apart from the love. Apart from the love that he had on us and he is having for us. And the response of the love. So when Paul says to the Ephesians, he says, you experienced th this love that you, you know, would continually, you would, you know, be soaked in this love of God. You know, God is not expecting anything from you apart from this love, you know, that you can enjoy in his presence. You know, Jim Elliot, we all know, you know, he's a missionary in his you know, before he died, before, you know, uh, three years, like, you know, he died in 30 years. And he had a wish that he had to reach out to Awuka Indians of South America for Christ. It's three years earlier, you know, he watched someone dying for these people group, gave their life as a missionary. So he asked God, Lord, let me live until I declare thy works to this generation. You know, Jim Elliot didn't expect anything. You know, he didn't expect the answer from God that would be too soon. And when he was 30, you know, within 30 years, you know, he went and reached out to that people group. And he died. He never expected that within three years of time, his name will reach out to the whole world, that people would follow him. He expressed the love of God. You know, he wanted to accomplish what God wants him to do. You know, here, this is the you know, question that God has for all of us. Are we strengthened in our inner person? Are we cleaning and renewing our inner person every day by the power and renewal of the Holy Spirit? The second thing is who is dwelling in our hearts is it Christ or is it 
the enemy who is dwelling. Third thing, how much have we experienced the power of Christ, the love of Christ in our life? All this, the bottom line of what Paul spoke to Ephesians is for the fullness of Christ. It's for the fullness of Christ. They wanted to be full. And as they are filled by the power, as they are filled by the love of God, then it will motivate them to love others. It will motivate them to share the gospel to others. It will motivate them to take the gospel to the end of the world and to pray for them and to reach out for them. So he prepared them as missionaries. He prepared them as pioneers. He prepared them as pastors. He prepared them as servants of the Lord. You know, just, you know, ask them to experience the love of Christ. You know, even this morning, we would give our life as we meditate on this. Let's ask God to fill us with his power, fill us with his love as we experience Christ. So shall we bow down and pray? Away from you, Lord, we surrender into your will and we pray that, Jesus, you would strengthen our inner being, O oh God. Lord, we pray that, Lord, you would dwell within us. Not the thoughts of the enemy, not the thoughts that would take us astray from you, but thoughts that would lead us, Lord, closer to you, O oh God. Lord, we surrender and we seek you that, Lord, you would alter our life according to your desire and according to your wish, O oh Master, Lord. Father, we pray that, Lord, you would give us Lord, your grace to experience your love, O oh God, being rooted and established in you, O oh God. Lord Jesus, we pray that as we, Lord, meditate on this series and Lord, as we give our life to you, O oh God, Lord, help us that we will experience your love more and more, more and more, O oh Lord. Lord, be soaked and drenched in your love, O oh God, that we would, Lord, be motivated to love others and to reach out to others, O oh God and to take this gospel to the end of the earth. Father, we want to thank you for this morning service. We want to thank you and bless your name for giving this, this opportunity to come together. Lord, we pray that you would bless us and you would continue to be with us in Cardis. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, our foundation is going on course, foundation course is going on. Thanks for praying for uh, the, especially the last lesson that we had salvation. Almost all accepted Christ except one. We are not sure about it and one couldn't attend. So um, continue to pray. Continue to pray. And today we are having the repentance class. So um, your prayers are required. Okay. So we have the classes between 4.30. Uh, so during that time, whenever you remember, pray for this foundation course. God bless you all. Thank you.